My name is Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I'm here with the latest from the gaming world. In the last 24 or so hours, we're going to kick things off today with something from EA, as we have some rumours as to their future plans for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Then we're going to move over to the US Supreme Court, who have opened things up for legal esports gambling. Then we're going to move over to some sad news from Cliffy B and Boss Key Productions. Then we're going to end things up with a leak for an accessibility focused Xbox One controller. But as I said, we're going to kick things off with EA. So before I get started on any information for this particular topic, I just want to say that everything here is unconfirmed rumour in flaming gold neo neon 10 foot high letters because the source for this is a Reddit post. And this particular Redditor got a random PM from a person claiming to be a DICE developer. Now, this person didn't just take their word for it, because basically the person claiming to be a DICE developer provided an unreleased image of a Princess Leia outfit. So, either they're a DICE developer or someone who managed to get their hands on a leaked image. But, to take this for what it's worth, the outfit was later confirmed by EA in a blog post detailing the future content. So... That may or may not give this person credibility, but just keep in mind that everything here is not official. So, here's kind of the key points from their post, and it's not really painting the best future for Star Wars Battlefront 2, to be quite honest with you. Because apparently EA does not have a 100% established roadmap, they adapt and sometimes change plans overnight. The next few months are going to be focusing on cosmetics and the smaller modes, such as for example the Heroes vs Villains uh, mode. And apparently EA are not allowing developers to communicate with the community, which is not really brilliant. And speaking of developers, the most interesting sort of ear-perking part of this particular rumour is that apparently Criterion and Motive are no longer working on the game. And DICE is the only studio working on Battlefront 2 and they're already working on Battlefield 2018. So when it comes to bug fixes, it continues to be rather damning according to this particular rumour as apparently statements like we are looking into this or we are aware of the fit situation are often given just kind of as something to say rather than because they actually have a fix in mind. And some of the bugs that have existed since the beta, as you guys might have noticed, have not been fixed and may never get a fix and apparently only major bugs are actually getting their attention. And apparently this is just due to the fact that the people who are actually doing the bug fixing for Battlefront 2 are not experienced enough. So any bugs that aren't getting enough traction online via you know, Reddit or the other community options available are probably just going to be swept under the rug. Now unsurprisingly part of this is also to do with how EA are keeping a strong eye on the community including Reddit and they do not want another Battlefront 2 incident to happen. And to be fair they have said this pretty much, not in those words obviously, but... They have said as much that they cannot afford to have another Star Wars Battlefront 2 and that's obviously why partially they're keeping an eye on the community because, you know, we've all seen the infamous Reddit posts, you know, where, for example, it's all about the, you know, pride and accomplishment and all of that. So, sorry, a sense of pride and accomplishment, should I say. So, they do not want to make that mistake again, probably because even EA couldn't afford that catastrophic a failure again for such a flagship title. And obviously it did still sell a bajillion copies, but obviously it sold less than expected. And it has undoubtedly not been great for their relations with Disney. So EA are definitely locking things down. But all of this does not look good for the future of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, the points I've just given you are very much the TLDR. I will include the link to the Reddit post in the description below this video. I highly suggest you give it a read because there is a huge post there and it's definitely worth reading that and of course the response to it. But we're going to move on now to esports and gambling. So what do we have here? Well, we have something that's a bit more general about sports but is undoubtedly going to have ramifications Excuse me, for esports as basically what's happened is the Supreme Court of the US has struck down a law prohibiting gambling on sports events with a 6-3 ruling and brings to an end a legal battle that has gone over for six years over the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act of 1992. So basically what this means is that any state that wishes to do so can basically have legal sports betting. Now, the ruling does not mention esports specifically, but obviously we have seen over the last few months very much a sort of joining of the two worlds, as it were, between conventional sports and esports. So it's pretty inevitable, if you ask me, that one is going to lead on to the other. And I actually have a statement here from the ESG Law founder Bryce Blum, who said, quote, the Supreme Court just struck down the primary law restricting sports betting throughout the US. This will have a profound impact on the esports industry and we're so underprepared for it. Five billion wages on esports last year about to skyrocket. 
Now, obviously, this could be a very mess messy situation indeed, because obviously we've already had issues of match fixing and all that sort of stuff already in the esports community. But also, there's issues of underage gambling. And given that, obviously, a lot of esports are watched by younger people, especially, say, you know, Overwatch and that sort of thing. We are going to have a bit of a sort of murky ground here that definitely needs to be clarified. And obviously there definitely needs to be oversight and management involved because obviously if there isn't then it's going to get very messy indeed. But I think that obviously there's still going to be laws in place to stop underage people from gambling but it's just going to kind of open it up to a bit more to them. If perhaps there's a, a game that is popular with the younger crowd and obviously the issue of skin gambling as well. But I think the issue that's more going to concern esports fans is going to be the issue of match fixing because while there's already been money, you know, under the table available, now it's obviously going to be a bit more available. Obviously, you know, that doesn't mean every player ever is going to be queuing up to do match fixing because obviously we have seen how well that can go for people. But it definitely is going to be an interesting thing that's going to be, I think, kind of on people's minds if esports betting becomes a regular recurrent thing. So definitely one to watch for the future, but speaking of the future, unfortunately, some less than brilliant news from Cliffy B. So we have a bit of a statement from him here, and I do want to say quickly, I, I am planning on doing a larger video on what went wrong with Lawbreakers, but uh, back on topic, we do have a statement here from Cliffy B about the future of Boss Key Productions, and he said, quote, As of today, Boss Key Productions is effectively no more. Four years ago, I set out to make a world-class video game studio and I hired some of the best talent in the video game industry. They worked tirelessly to produce quality products, and while we had our ups and downs, I'd like to think we had fun doing it. Lawbreakers this was a great game that unfortunately failed to gain traction and a last inch attempt we scrambled to do our take on the huge battle royale genre with Radical Heights which was well received however it was too little too late. As for myself I'm going to take off some time and reflect I need to focus on myself and family as well as my Aussie Teddy who is slowly fading from us. Video games will forever be part of who I am and I hope to make something new again someday however I need to withdraw and take this time. So basically Radical Heights is no more and obviously Boss Key Productions is also no more. Definitely a disappointment, you know, Lawbreakers definitely had some fun gameplay as I myself discussed in my beta coverage of the game, but again, this is going to be part of a larger video, it definitely had a lot of problems, primarily to do with its character or lack thereof it. But definitely a sad time for Cliffy B and of course everyone else at Bosky Studios, you know, this has obviously got to be a tough time for them, they've obviously poured a lot of time and money and blood, blood sweat and tears undoubtedly into a game that unfortunately just kind of fell, fell flat on its face, so... My heart does go out to them a bit and hopefully they can all land on their feet as well as possible. But with that said, let's finish off this video with the leak from the Xbox One controller. Now, obviously this is a leak, so once again, do take this with a massive pinch of salt, but it was shared by a well-known Windows leaker by the name of Walking Cat. Now, unfortunately, we don't really have much comment from the original source of this, but Windows Central is claiming it to be a, quote, new Xbox controller focused on improving access to gaming for those with accessibility needs. Now, of course, Microsoft have been working pretty damn hard on accessibility and obviously improving that for desktop OSs and all that sort of thing. You know, for example, we saw research into eye tracking for Windows control, as well as them celebrating, for example, Global Accessibility Awareness Day and all this other stuff. But, you know, they have very much been supporting this and trying to make their OS is more accessible for people who have accessibility needs. So obviously an Xbox One controller that is more focused on those people seems like a perfectly logical thing to do not only in terms of what they've already done but of course it would make perfect sense for them as a company you know we have seen for example modes like we saw in Neo Automata where you know the camera was controlled for you know, the combat was automatic that have definitely been designed for people perhaps who might have motor control issues or whatever the issue might be so I think it would definitely be a welcome addition if this particular leak turns out to be true now, of course, it's entirely possible that this is just a elaborate fake. You know, we have seen people make actual physical fake things like we saw with that fake Nintendo thing a while back. But this is definitely something that I think could be cool. Even if this particular design doesn't turn out to be true, I think this could definitely go down well and be a welcome addition to the Xbox family for a lot of gamers. So, with all that said, let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything discussed here today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.